Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 7.6, Solving Quadratic Trigonometric Equations. So solving a quadratic trigonometric equation is like solving a linear trigonometric equation. Basically, you just solve the quadratic part and then we'll add the extra step of solving the trig part. So we're going to isolate the trig part and then solve the trig part. Okay, so let's just review um, some of the techniques for solving a, quad a quadratic equation. Um, so x squared minus x equals 2. First of all, we have to move everything over to one side so that everything is equal to 0. So we'll do that first. And then you can use a couple of methods here. The first method that we could use is um, we could just factor it if possible. So method number one is to factor. Um, and this is factorable. If it's not factorable, then uh, you know, don't don't bother. Um, so x minus 2 and x plus 1 multiply to be x squared minus x minus 2. So x is equal to 2 or x is equal to negative 1. So method number 2 is to use the quadratic formula. Method 2 quadratic formula. If you don't remember the quadratic formula, you can review it right now. It's uh, x equals negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And uh, sometimes you hear me call it the midnight formula. So 1 plus minus the square root of 1 uh, plus 2 times 4, which is 8 over 2. And uh, so we get 1 plus minus 3 over 2. So x is equal to 1 plus 3 is 4, divided by 2, 2. Or x equals 1 minus 3, negative 2, divided by 2, negative 1. So you should get the same answer uh, using either method. Of course, the third method is to uh, complete the square and then isolate x, but that takes longer and it's not worth it. So we're not going to be doing it that way today. So we're going to solve these four questions and we'll be done. So um, you can see that this first one, a, is just like the other one, except for instead of x, I've got sine x. And if you want, you can always do a replacement. So if you want to say, OK, u is equal to sine x, then we can replace it. So it's going to be u squared minus u equals 2. And you could solve it that way and then replace this u with the sine x. So if you want to do it that way, I'm just going to show you how to do it that way first. Um, then we can s solve it in the same way we just did exactly the same thing on the first page. So u is equal to 2 and u is equal to negative 1. And then we'd replace it again. So sine x is equal to 2 and sine x is equal to negative 1. Um, so this one, there's no solutions because sine x can't be greater than 2, so no solutions here. Uh, but we do know that sine x is equal to negative 1 when x is equal to 3 pi over 2. And since no range has been given, we have to do plus 2 pi k k and z. Okay, so actually for the following ones I'm going to change it so that we do have a, a specific range, but we could do it that way. The other way you could do it is just exactly the same. It's going to look exactly the same. So we start with sine x squared minus sine x minus 2 equals 0. So again, I'm moving it over and then I'm going to factor it. So if you can see what the factoring is um, without without changing it, then feel free to do it. And then sine x is equal to 2, sine x is equal to negative 1. And so we're back to this same, you can see this is the same here, like this. So we get no solutions for this one. And we get um, x is equal to 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, k and z. So there's no real advantage to doing it this way unless, you know, you have difficulty looking at it and figuring out what the factoring is. But if, you know, if you want to do it that way, that's totally fine, totally legit. You should just make sure you write that out here. Um, you can see this is much quicker in terms of just writing it, but if you can't factor it when you're looking at it this way, then don't bother, right? Just do it the long way. That's fine. Okay. So the next one, 2 sine squared x minus 3 sine x plus 1 equals 0. So I can see that I can factor it. It's 2 sine x minus 1 sine x minus 1 is equal to 0. And then we'll just isolate. So sine x is equal to 1 half and sine x is equal to 1. Oh, and I'm just going to add 0 less than equal to x less than equal to 2 pi. And um, so we're going to solve that here. So sine x is equal to 1 half. So in quadrant 1, I know that this is x equals uh, pi over 6. And also in quadrant 2, x is equal to pi minus pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 6. 
And again, I'm just going to put a um, victory dance around it so that I can see my answers. And sine x equals 1, well, that only happens at x equals pi over 2 uh, in one round, so we have three answers. Okay, we actually expect to get um, 0 to 4 answers. That's because for each of, I could get two solutions for sine x in my quadratic, maximum of two solutions, and for those two solutions, I can get a maximum of two quadrants. Okay, so each of those gets two quadrants. So this is um, a case where I only get three answers, but I can get up to four answers if I'm only having one rotation. So this next one, it looks a little bit weird. I'm just going to add the restriction again. So 0 less than equal to x less than equal to 2 pi. Um, so because I don't have the same ratio, I am going to have to change it so that I get to the same ratio. Um, so sec squared x, I happen to know, is 1 plus tan squared x. Um, so I'm going to replace that there, equals 0. And now I can just do 2 plus 2 tan squared x minus 3 plus tan x. And I'm going to put it into standard form because that's easiest for me. 10x minus 1 equals 0. And now we can solve it. So 2 tan x um, minus 1, tan x plus 1 is equal to 0. So we're going to isolate tan. Tan x is equal to 1 half. Tan x is equal to negative 1. Um, so here I know that beta, I typed into my calculator, beta is equal to 0 0.46, and tan is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. So x is equal to beta in quadrant 1, 0 0.46, and x is equal to pi plus beta in quadrant 3, and that ends up being 3.61. Just do this on your calculator. Don't worry, I'm not doing it in my head. Um, <laughs> so here I'm going to do tan beta is equal to 1, um, and I already know what beta is, it's pi over 4, so I'm going to use that in my two quadrants, so quadrant um, 2 is when tan is negative and quadrant 4, so again, if you can find the exact value, you definitely should, so pi minus pi over 4 is equal to 3 pi over 4, and x is equal to 2 pi minus pi over 4, so that is equal to 7 pi over 4. And so you can see I've got my four solutions in this quadratic. Okay, one more to go. Okay, so let's do this one last one, and I'm just not going to write the restriction. Let's do it without the restriction. So sine x and cos 2x. Now cos 2x is very flexible, and so because we want a quadratic involving sine x, I'm going to use that definition of cos x that will suit me. So plus 3, 1 minus 2 sine squared x equals 2. If I used any of the other ones, I'd get a cos in there, and I don't want to have cos, I just want to have one ratio, and because sine x is already in there, that's the ratio that I'm going to choose. So we'll expand that, minus 6 sine squared x, minus 2 is equal to 0, and then I'll put it into standard form, plus 3 sine x, plus 1 is equal to 0. If you don't like to have a negative in front, because it's equal to 0, we'll just multiply everything by negative 1, and that's okay. We're not uh, proving something, we're just solving, so you don't have to worry about doing that. You're allowed. Um, so you can check the discriminant, and I have checked the discriminant, I know that this is not actually factorable. So I'm going to use sine x equals negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac. Make sure you write out the formula over 2a. So you notice that I have a sine x here. This is actually really, really, really important, and this is a common error that people make, and I guarantee that at least, um, I'll say 15% of the people watching this video right now are going to get it wrong on a test. So make sure you write sine x. If you write x, you're going to get some solution, and you're going to think, oh, I'm done, but you remember you have to figure out what x is after we figure out what sine x is, okay? So put sine x in here. So sine x is equal to negative b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And again, I'm using this as my a, this is my b, and this is my c. So just like a regular quadratic, so I'll get 3 plus minus square root of 9 plus 24, 4 times 6 times 1, 
over 12, 2 times 6. So I get 3 plus minus the square root of 33 over 12. And so I'm going to get two answers. Sine x is equal to, uh, if I add it, 0 0.7287. And for ratios, I always round to four decimal places. Just keeps everything a little bit neat. Uh, and if I do 3 minus root 33 divided by 12, I get sine x is equal to um, negative 0 0.2287. And so now I can solve those. So if I use beta, sine beta is equal to 0 0.7287. So I get beta is equal to um, 0 0.82. Sine is positive in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 2, so um, x is equal to 0 0.82, which is my beta, and x is equal to pi minus 0 0.82, which ends up being um, 2.33. So you can do a little victory dance around them, so you can show that you know the answer. And here I'm going to do sine beta is equal to positive 0 0.2287. And then if you type into your calculator, you should get uh, beta is equal to 0 0.23. So in quadrant 3, because here sine is negative, in quadrant 3, x equals pi plus 0 0.23, which ends up being about 3.37. And in quadrant 4, x is equal to 2 pi minus 0 0.23, so that's 6.05. So in this case, I got four answers as well, and that's the maximum number of answers. But uh, because I don't have that range in, uh, in place, I do have to write plus 2 pi k, k and z for every single one. So let me preemptively victory danced. Oops. So we'll add the 2 pi k plus 2 pi k, k and z. And here I'll write 3, 3 plus 2 pi k plus 2 pi k, k and z. Okay, so basically all we did was we moved everything over, put it into standard form, and then solved for the trig ratio. And then once we've solved for the trig ratio, we can actually solve for the angle using our quadrants just like before, and keeping in mind the number of rotations that we need. I hope you enjoyed it. If you ha found any errors, you can write them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.